Hi, I'm Tim, co-founder of Nudge, and on behalf of us all at Nudge, I'm absolutely delighted to be having this discussion about such, such an important topic, financial inclusion. Or, or to be honest, to be more accurate, I should probably say financial exclusion, because that's the problem we've got, and that's the problem we need to fix. The unfortunate fact is that life's unfair, and in large, this is because the personal finance ecosystem just doesn't work for us all. I've got some stats here that, that, that demonstrate the, the size of the problem there. Um, so whether it's the advice gap, you know, the poverty premium, nepotism, the loyalty penalty, they're all examples of this inequity. And we can see the impact on the slide here. And this is serious stuff because the thing is, you know, money isn't optional, regardless of who we are, our nationality, our personality, even our political persuasion. A proactive relationship with money is critical. And for the progression of humankind as one, we need the personal finance ecosystem to work for everyone, for it to be inclusive, not exclusive, and to embrace diversity, not reject it. And this is big. You know, I'm not, I'm not silly. I know it's not simple. But from the minute that Jeremy and I co-founded Nudge, we've known that change is possible and that Nudge is going to lead it. And we've identified three ways to do so. Firstly, we need to recognize that financial literacy is a human right. UNESCO have long campaigned that literacy is a human right, but this has to include financial literacy too. And the United Nations are with us on this. The goals three and four of their 17 sustainable development ahead. Or just Google UN 17 goals to see this for yourself and check out goals three and four. Um, so with, with UNESCO and the UN, we agree that money, skills and knowledge are the foundation to financial literacy. And those skills and knowledge come from unbiased financial education. And we believe that everyone, regardless of who or where they are, has the right to unbiased financial education. And only then, with the confidence and control that this brings, can we help people build brighter futures. Secondly, we've got to better use and embrace technology. You know, our human, inherent human bias means that the financial system's rigged against huge swathes of humankind implicitly and explicitly, so consciously and unconsciously too. And this is desperately unfair, but used correctly, technology can smash through this bias, break these barriers and engage people in an equal and equitable way. And lastly, we need business to lead this. And that's many of you. Governments aren't doing enough and are just too slow. So organizations need to step up and make this happen. You know, whether that's banks, schools, employers, housing associations, insurers, utility providers, we need them all to use their presence, their resources to drive that financial equality. And because of course, you know, not only is it critical for CSR, it's great for business too. We know that diverse, socially conscious organizations perform better. So as you can see, and as evidenced by the UN's recognition, this is a big problem which needs fixing, but it can be fixed. So we've got the will, we've got the ideas, we've got the motivation, and we've got the champions, champions like Santander, who are supporting their employees and now customers to help lead this change. And I'm delighted to introduce Odo now, and she, who we're gonna talk a bit more about um, how Santander are doing that. Welcome, Odo. Thank you, Tim. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, so my name's Oda Noel. I've worked with for Santander for in a variety of roles for around about 15 years. Over the last four years, I've worked as an innovation partner in the bank. Um, so just in case you don't know who Santander is, uh, we're a retail and a commercial bank based in the UK, and we're wholly owned subsidiary of um, Bank of Santander. So we have 20,000 employees, over 20,000 employees, and we have a really simple purpose which is to help people and businesses prosper. And what we mean by that is that we help them purchase homes, we help them save for the future, and we support their business growth. So just to share with you a little bit around the relationship with Nudge and why we chose Nudge. 
Um, one of the key things to bear in mind is that the fact that you may work for a financial services company doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have the knowledge and the tools to help you make the right steps towards financial well-being, which is really important for us. So um, at Santander, we felt it was actually important to help our employees along that path. So when we reviewed the market, Nudge really stood out for us because it was their level of personalization, which we recognize is really quite key for engagement. And we've been using Nudge to support employee financial well-being since September 2018. Uh, we also love the way that Nudge supports our employee benefits offering, particularly the financial benefits to over 21,000 employees. So the relationship that we've got with Nudge is that we don't really view them as a separate service. We see it as integrated with our wider benefits and our well-being offering. And we believe it's essential to our success. Uh, we take the opportunity to customize some of the nudges in order to signpost our benefits. And we've worked with the Nudge team to create bespoke Santander promotions for our pension schemes, our share schemes, and the launch of our bonus exchange scheme. And all of that has had, we've seen really positive response in terms of take up. So putting those comms together with Nudge and having them sent out as, on a segmented basis to our employees is incredibly quick and really easy. And just to give you a few numbers, um, over 90% of our current employees have engaged with Nudge to some extent. Um, we've seen 40 to 50% of employees reading the market and the reward related nudges. And nearly 30% of our employees have actually selected interest within the Nudge profile to get more personalized help and tips um, about the service. So we really look forward to kind of building on the success and we're excited to see the service enhancements that Nudge have in the pipeline. So I just wanted to take you through what I, my personal experience and my personal journey with Nudge has been. So I was working on an initiative where as a bank, we're always looking for new ways to support our customers and really help during those moments that matter. So we all know that owning a home is a life goal for so many of us, but we know that for first time buyers, the biggest barrier to getting on the property ladder is raising that deposit. And with average deposits required in the UK at 44,000 pound, and we looked in our study, we found that actually aspiring homeowners were aiming to save only £24,000, taking on average about four years to reach that goal. So we saw that there was a real reality gap between the true cost of the deposit and the understanding of what people were aiming for. So most of us um, who bought before know that the home buying journey can be really quite challenging. And it's quite natural for us to turn to family, to turn to friends for a bit of help. It could be simple, it could be sharing personal path experiences, given, um, given suggestions, it could be coming to viewings, it, it could just be simply that being that listening ear and that sounding board. Other times it actually could involve financial support. And our research was showed us that actually over a third of first time buyers are hoping to do it with help from their family and friends in the next five years. And we're expecting that that number to only increase as property prices uh, increase further. It's just a reality. So the, we knew that actually family were often instinctively, they wanted to help whenever and however they can. However, what we recognized was that there was a problem parents were experiencing, was that by giving or loaning that money, they could potentially also be negatively impacting their own current and future financial plans. So a lot of us parents aren't sure what the various options are that are open to us. We may not have that ready pot of money to hand over. So we may be considering other ways such as unlocking pensions or home equity, which really needs some careful decision and, and thought and understanding about what the impact of that could be on future plans. So what we wanted to do was actually help support that underserved group of parents who were having to go to a variety of places to get information and to really help them to make their own personal informed decision based on information that we could help them with. And that would actually be good for their plans for the future, for their future, as well as for their future home buying children's future as well. So what, what did we do? We developed an information hub, it's called Step Up. We launched it back in May, um, Step Up Helping Family to Buy. So it's a place where parents can go to find information in one place on topics. Those topics could range from 
getting up to speed on the property market, finding out how helping could affect you um, and also your future plans. And that could be retirement plans, um, whether to give, give any money over as a gift, whether to give it as a loan or as early, early inheritance, as well as how, to, how they could help if they didn't have that money to contribute towards the deposit. So we really wanted to um, provide information and tools. One of the tools that we designed was a home deposit calculator. So it would help the future home buyer to give a really, a much more clearer picture of how much they should save. So what they needed to work uh, input into the calculator is that where do they want to live? What type of house do they want? Number of bedrooms? What savings they already have or what they're planning to do? And what it would give them would be an indication of how long it would take to reach that particular goal as well. So it touches on the point I made at the, at the beginning, which is there's a reality, reality gap between what first time buyers perceive to be the deposit they need versus what they actually need. So alongside this, when we were designing this, these, this information and tools, I was also, as an employee of Santander, I was receiving these emails from Nudge. So I registered on the employee platform. I was reading some articles. I found them quite simple. So the, there was a few that said it's a four minute read or a two minute vid video. So it wasn't heavy. And what I really liked about it was how timely they were. So I'd get an e email, for example, about university costs, which was relevant for my children. Um, or I would get something, for example, that was just before the ISA season started. And I felt that Nudge got that balance right in their event triggered communication approach on making it personal and also making it time, timely, which meant that it was relevant, certainly for, for, for me. So when we were starting to think about this information hub, I went back and I couldn't kind of get out of my mind what I'd been seeing and nudge. And I kept on thinking, this is actually really useful. The content I'm receiving as an employee is really useful. Why can't we give that to our customers? So I spoke to my colleague, Clive, um, who leads the Planning for the Future squad, and that covers savings and investments. And we reached out to our internal relationship manager for Nudge to start that conversation. So our proposal was really simple. We said that how do we offer relevant Nudge content, which today we give to our employees, how can we give that to our customers? So it seemed like a good idea. We met with Nudge, we discussed our suggestion, and they were, they were intrigued as it was opening up an opportunity that they were recently exploring. So the more that we talked, um, the more it made sense that why don't we do some test and learn? Why don't we take a selection of the content that would be relevant for these parents that are helping their, um, their loved ones to buy their home? And actually, we took content that was around making um, a will, taking out a joint loan or a mortgage, inheritance tax, that was just some of the examples. So really pertinent, relevant content that would be useful for parents. Um, and we also clearly signposted it. So this content was from Nudge, we used our logo um, and we delivered that. So we went live in May, so it's early days. Um, however, the indicators are, are looking promising that the Nudge con content is being well read. Uh, and we'll look at opportunities for feedback and how to optimize that content for our customers. And we really look forward to evolving this relationship with Nudge because we think there is something really powerful in providing information, providing education, like what Tim was saying Earl, at the beginning, that goes out to everybody. It's not based on any kind of criteria. It's open and it's available to any family member, any parent, or it could even be the first time buyers themselves. They might even find it useful. So that's kind of my story of how I came to be working with Nudge. Um, and I have to say it, it's, been a, it's been a great journey for me. So thank you, thank you, Tim. Thank you for the opportunity. And I'll hand back to you. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Odo. I um, absolutely loved hearing your, your story, the integration and the personalization and those specific objectives around the share plans and uh, I guess the 90% engagement. I mean, not many employee benefits can talk about 90% engagement. I guess that shows you know, just how important this is to everybody. Yeah, money it doesn't matter how much or how little you've got it affects us all and then that transition from employees to customers um really good stuff um so i think you know as i said at the beginning we know that everybody deserves 
and needs this access to financial education. And we've got the will, we've got the ideas, we've got the motivation, and we've got the champions like Santander to help drive the change needed. And I'm sure there's loads of passionate people listening into this session today with great ideas as well. So yeah, please let's continue the debate. We welcome your contact. Feel free to contact myself or your usual nudge uh, nudge um, uh, contact. Um, I think there's a few other bits that we're doing which are worth uh, mentioning as a continuation to this discussion. So come see us after this at the, the virtual booth. Um, Odo and I will be there and open for questions. Um, and then for those of you with global people responsibilities, make sure you join our global financial wellbeing forum on the 15th of July. Our first global event was an absolute belter. So I know this will be too. And if as an organization, you think you're ready to do your bit and support that financial inclusion, that financial education, whether that's for your employees or your customers or your members, depending on your organization, look out for our financial wellbeing playbook, which is uh, apparently going to be emailed to you after this event. So thank you again to, uh, to the audience. Thank you, Odo. You know, this really feels like the start of a movement, a movement to recognize financial literacy as a human right, not a birthright. Goodbye.